Yo, today we're gonna walk through the advanced account permission system of any EOSIO blockchain. EOSIO blockchains are EOS, WAX, Telos, Proton, Bose. We have a few of them. And what we will go through today is how to set up a decentralized account recovery system. Yes, you can recover your account in case you lose your key, in case you uh, you go and die your your uh, fiance or whatever can actually recover your account. There's a lot of features and also we will go through how a business could set up their account permission to make it more secure so they can trust their employees so they can actually use the main account for the smart contract if they have a marketplace or if they just use it for investment. So let's just dig into it and go through it. Here we have one account that I set up on the WAX testnet because this is where we will actually do the, the showcase today. This is just a regular account. Uh, we can go down, we can see the keys. We have an owner key and we have an active key. There's nothing uh, weird about this so far. And the owner key, for you that don't know, is the admin key of any EOSIO account. This is your most precious item. You should make sure this is treated as something that you do not want any anyone to find out. Your most secret secret of anything. You, if you let anyone find out, you're doomed. And then we have the active key. And the first thing we need to understand is on EOSIO, the account name is immutable. You cannot change the account name. So the account name is what you use to transfer, to interact with anything. You send it to the account name. You do not send it to any key like you do on, on Bitcoin or Ethereum or different chains like that. So you use the account name, which is very good because anyone can read that this is big Mike fans one. So if I want to transfer to this, I just need to remember this. Very easy to remember, very easy to, to control that it is correct. And these keys are actually mutable. That means that you can update them. You can add keys, you can change keys, you can remove them, you can add permissions. Here we have an owner permission. This is the admin one. We have the active one, which is... Uh, can do everything on your account except change and update the owner key. So the active key is the one you will use, the one you will have in wallets and uh, things like that. And here is actually the most basic secure setup you can have. You have one key as owner, one key as active. One big mistake most people actually do is this one. Save your life. This account is horrible actually. If we go into keys here, we have one key for owner and one key for active. This guy, is if he loses his key, his computer crashes, um, someone hacks him, he accidentally types it in somewhere, he has a malware that, that reads whatever happens on his screen, whatever happens. If he loses this key, he's doomed. If he has a million wax, they are locked in this account, no one will ever get them. Doomed. So always set a different owner key that you keep offline. Never touch any device. Create it offline, use it offline, or use a hardware wallet like a ledger. Whatever you want to use, make sure you have an owner key that is secure so your account does not look like this because this is not how you should do it. That's the most basic one. So this the, the most basic permission, make sure you have different ones. And then let's dig into something here. Here we have an account called account recall. So this is the immutable asset and we go down where we see keys. And here's the first interesting part. We have the owner key, which is actually free keys. So you can actually have these free, you can store them in different location. One in your home, one in your uh, office, one in your mom's basement or whatever. Uh, and then we have the active key, which is also uh, five different ones, but one is special because one is actually an account. And Big Might Fans one, if you remember, is the first account that we walked through. So this account actually has been added here so it can actually issue or execute uh, active permission commands on this account. But there's a, there's a catch here because we see that they have plus one, plus one. This is the weight of the key. This is how heavy it is, how powerful the, the key is. And all of this is one. And this active actually has a free in threshold. This means that you need three of these to sign any transaction for this account to actually do anything. So if you want to transfer funds, you need three of these keys to do that. So Big Mike fans here can't do anything himself. He needs the support of at least two keys to be able to do anything. 
If we go back to Big Mike fans here, we see that here's the owner key one and threshold one. So this key can do whatever it wants with this uh, permission and this key can do whatever it wants with this permission. This is not the case on here. Uh, and the owner key here is two, so you actually need two of them. So if one of these keys are compromised, they can't do anything with your uh, account. They actually need to have both two of them, two of the three to do anything. So you have one extra, perhaps in a bank vault or whatever, and then you have two, two stored in different secure locations. You only ever go get them if you need to change your keys. And if you change your keys, you should count them as dead keys and you should update them to new ones. Uh, important to understand. Still, this is just the basic permissions. This is what you should do if you have a little value of your account. You should make sure that you have different keys. You set them up in a nice way so you don't just have one key. Now, we go to something that I call the super account. Super account here. If we go down, we see this list is very long. We have three different permissions set up here. We have the owner key the active key and we have a vote permission. Let's start with the vote one. Vo vote one is a custom permission. So we have the owner, which is the top one, the admin one. One step below that, we have the active key. Active key can do everything except uh, managing any of the owner permissions. And then we have the custom permission. Vote is just something that I named it. It could be anything. It could be Anders if I wanted to. It could be employee one or whatever. Then we have one key, we see it has a weight of one and a threshold of one. So this key can do what uh, can do whatever it can. And this is important, whatever it can. And I didn't say that wrong because in the custom permission, you also had to tell it what it can do because it can't do anything from start. You have to add what it can do. And here I added a contract, EOSIO. This is the main system contract on any EOSIO blockchain, unless it has been changed. Uh, EOSIO, and this is the action it can do. So this is one way for WAX to claim rewards. And this is uh, another way to claim rewards on WAX. And this is how you vote for producers on WAX. So this key can claim rewards and it can vote for producers. It cannot transfer tokens. It cannot uh, send anything. It cannot buy anything. It can't do anything except what you tell it to do. So you can have different permissions for different things. If you have a smart contract like a market, perhaps you want uh, to have um, one custom permission that is allowed to update certain features in your smart contract, then you can give that access so they can do it easily. Uh, because if we go up here, we start with the active uh, active permission. We have a few things to, to see here. We have this free that has the threshold of one, the, the weight of one, the threshold is free. So active key needs three keys. So this free is actually what it needs to sign or this has two plus one, that's free. This says free alone, so this can do whatever you want. This key here can do whatever you want. And this can do whatever it want. And why this is interesting is that if we have a business, let's go into how a business would set up this. This could be how a business does it. It could be used the accounts like we have up here, but it could use keys like we have down here. And what they do here is this guy is probably the owner. The owner has the rights to do whatever he wants with the active key. He just signs it as any other transaction, the same way this Big Mike account would sign it with his key. Nothing weird here. Uh, but this one, the, the two way, this is uh, perhaps it's a manager. The manager has a position together with one of the employees, because I count these three as could be employees. Can be perhaps the web developer, the system contract developer, and the support guy. They can't do anything alone because just this key can do anything. Two of them can't uh, like, okay, we have a master plan. We're going to steal everything. They can't. They have, they have to get the third one on board. Uh, so the employees with less stake in your business, they need more people to work together to be able to transfer, to update the smart contract or to, to do big things. Uh, and this manager, as it has weight two, it can actually work together with one employee and it can do whatever it wants. And we have another one that I would call a manager here, which has a weight two. And then this guy can also work together with one employee or the two manager can work together. And then we have the owner, uh, which has this, uh, the plus three one, the, the one that is weighted free. And we have a second one, perhaps this is the, uh, 
owner has uh, two devices he has this on the other one he has this as an extra key in case he loses this one he just has this extra key just as a precaution whatever he wants so far so good so this is the the basic advanced feature that you can use here and this is how i would make sure that the business the employees can actually execute things they can actually use the account but they need to work together so if a hacker goes and uh, get hold of one of the devices he can't do anything he needs uh, three of them to to do anything and if we go up to owner so owner was the most important uh, permission we have the admin permission so this is very important to keep secure so here we have one that is weight free as we went through here and we need a threshold of five to pass this any transaction here so the owner has free so he can't do anything by himself he needs to manage it as a help so these two guys can do whatever they want they can update they can remove all other permissions they can do whatever they want these two guys can do it but he can do it alone the manager can't do it together with the other manager they also need an employee the three employees can't do it alone, they also need a manager to do this, or two employees and uh, the owner. This is just an example of how you could use the different thresholds. The one that, ha that owns the business surely wants it more powerful, but he wants it more secure, so he doesn't even give himself full access. He wants to collaborate together with one of the uh, managers. And this also makes sure that you have some kind of accountability on the owner and you can trust everything uh, so far. And if you, if this actually was a business that has a marketplace that uh, sells NFTs or uh, is, is an exchange or whatever, you can likely believe that this team has actually thought about what they are doing. It's likely more secure. You can probably trust what they are doing. However, I could set this up myself. It looks good, but it's, it could be as that I, I have all of them in the same wallet and it doesn't matter. And you can, as I see in here, you can add accounts that can do the same. And you see this account active key can access the owner key here. But as we said before, this has the weight of one, weight of one, weight of one. So these three can't do anything alone. They, they need plus two more. So you need five of these or you need to add them. And why this is interesting is now we go to what is most amazing about the account permission system. Because if we use the EOSIO account permission in a powerful way, we can achieve decentralized account recovery. So on EOSIO, your account name is immutable. You cannot change it. If you send tokens, if you do anything, you send it to the account name. All keys can be updated. And here we have set it up. And let me just go to me and my sketch pad. I prepared this. So understand here we have the, the number five here. This is an important part to, to, to get here. We, let's change it to the pencil so it's easier to draw. We have the owner key five, so we can't. We need one, two, three, four, five. We need all of these to sign a transaction. And what they can do here is that these five can update the permission, so they can actually change keys of your account. That means that anyone that you give them away can actually steal your account. But what we can do here with this five threshold and this weight system is that we can trust that if each of them are a decentralized business, they can't do anything alone. These guys can't do anything alone. And even if the same team owned all three of these businesses, they could, can't do anything alone. They would need to either coll collide together with one of the managers, if you uh, want, or with uh, the, uh, the owner of the business or whatever. And why this is very interesting to understand is because these could be decentralized small businesses that offer account recovery as a service and this service is something that i would like to see for all eosio chains to emerge we, we want trusted entities to be able to do this so this is one business account recov this is another business and another business and another and another so we have five different businesses well we, we have six ones and we need five of them to recover our account so in case this guy's computer crashes and this guy's computer crashes and this employee leaves and this employee leaves now the owner can't do anything with his account anymore probably has set it up before but imagine the owner and the two managers are on a flight it crashes 
Now the owner key is lost, the account is lost forever because the employees can't update the owner permissions, they can't do anything alone, they are doomed. Uh, this is when the account recovery come into action. Let's say you have your personal account with a lot of wax staked or a lot of EOS or a high, a high uh, amount of value on your account. You could hire the service of these businesses and they could act as your account recovery in case uh, you die or your computer is lost and your family can get your tokens, your assets. So this is very powerful and this is actually very easy to set up. This is just five different accounts, in this case it's six, that need to sign a transaction together with the owner permission on this account to update the off of your account. And this is how you set up an account recovery on an EOSIO blockchain. An account recovery is very powerful because that is impossible to do on any other chain in any decent way. Because here, if I if this business somehow goes out of business or get the reputation of doing uh, malicious stuff, the owner and his manager can just go in and update the permission and this is done. It's gone, it's no longer here, or they could add another business, another uh, permission. And yeah, I, I don't know what else to say here actually. This is so amazing and I can't understand why people are not using this already because this is very simple to set up. Uh, it is a bit complicated to create these multi-sig proposals, but it's not impossible. I can teach you if you want to uh, of how you can do that. So we have this decentralized way of actually recovering our account in case we lose it and we still have the way in our business to use the account in any way we want. And we have this custom permission. So this is the advanced way of managing your account on, let's say this was your account. You have 3.7 billion tokens, a total of $132 million in value. Probably you would not want these keys to look like this. Uh, the admin wax owner can do this. Okay, this is actually, it could be good. If we go in here and look at admin wax, we can see admin wax, we see keys. Okay, here we see threshold. This one is very powerful. So this one can do anything, but these two keys, and this one can't do anything unless it has, uh, unless it works together. So this permission was actually set up pretty good. So that is good. Uh, and then we have these custom permissions here. Uh, very nice. And if we go to Wax Sweden Org, which is our account here, we go to keys and we see we have a few different, different things set up here. We have this Oracle, which is a service. So we set the permission here. This key can only update the Delphi Oracle contract and do the right action. It can't do anything else. It can't claim rewards. It can't unrig producer. It can't rig, It can't do these things. It can't transfer tokens or anything. Very important to understand. This account permission system on EOSIO blockchains is so powerful and it should not look like this where you have the same active and owner key. If you have any questions, comment below and make sure to actually go through and learn this. It's very simple to set up. I have uh, tutorials on how you do it, how you add custom permissions, how you change your keys, how you set up your own key where you manage your, your private keys, your own account where you manage your private keys. So over and out, this is the advanced account recovery uh, or account, account permission system on EOSIO blockchains. Peace. Peace.